Can the Creality Hallet Mage Pro print Combat Patrol Thousand Suns? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you f idiot, get off YouTube. <laughs> So, I gotta say, I am really excited to finally be taking a look at Creality's resin 3D printer offerings. They seem to jam-pack their machines with a lot of features and position themselves competitively amongst the other manufacturers. But are they any good? Should Creality be your first foray into resin 3D printing for tabletop miniatures? Or is this printer just a little too weird to be a serious option? Why, Creality? You're doing so good. Let's set ourselves the challenge of 3D printing the equivalent to a Thousand Suns Combat Patrol box and find out. So Creality have kindly provided these machines for me to check out, so cheers Creality. And so you know, they have zero control over this video and my choice of words. Zero. Double zero. Wah. Right, so Dusty Suns STL files. I think I know just the guy. Okay, well that was pretty painless. I thought uh, I usually have a problem with my audio on Discord for some reason. I don't know why. I'm very <laughs> I think... tech unsavvy. Oh, okay. How are you tech unsavvy? You're like uh, a ZBrush <laughs> wizard. <laughs> I'm an I'm an artist, not a not a tech guy. <laughs> just, uh... <laughs> yeah, but there's there's some overlap, right? Like you gotta uh, you gotta know some tech to to do some art. Yeah, I I I, I know just enough about computers to know that I don't know anything. Yeah, Does that makes no, sense. Fair enough. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chad from DMG Minis and the official sponsor of this video. Chad, how's it going, man? Dude, I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. That's good. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. I can't think of a more fitting sponsor for this channel than DMG Minis. So thank you, good sir, for agreeing to sit down and have a chat with me and for sponsoring this video. Yeah, it's, um, it's a great opportunity and... Uh... I appreciate it. While unboxing this printer, a few things stood out to me that I really liked. Oh, that is so cool. It has a swingy door. I've been waiting for the day I see this on a sub $500 printer ever since the original Anycubic Photon. In my opinion, this is just so much better than the removable lid that you then have to find somewhere else to put down. Uh, a little silicon boot. I'm not sure what that's for. Creality go above and beyond with their goodie bags, including some fun little stickers and a spare FEP, which is just absolutely amazing, and every new 3D printer should come with one of these, so good job Creality for that. <laughs> How do they do the fucking... I should know, I live in Australia. <laughs> sir, the 3D printer has some amazing features, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is actually awesome, and I'm really excited to see this built-in fume extractor. This is a lot like that DIY system I made a while back that directly vents your printer's enclosure. But with the added benefit of a built-in carbon filter. So yeah, I'm actually super impressed by the inclusion of this, and more manufacturers should take note. I would suggest, however, being cautious about using it if you're printing in a cold environment, because this will draw in a constant supply of cold ambient air and could lead to print failures for you. This tube is kind of short too, so you're gonna either have to have your printer nearby a window or find some way to extend it. All right, can you see this here? Like, like this thing, this is annoying because you gotta sort of like put the build plate under that and then you see this hole, it's like not, it's not really lining up, like what the fuck? Oh, I get it now, the, I'm an idiot. So the vat pushes against this thing. Right, that's why it wasn't sitting in flush. Yeah, I'm stupid. But in any case, I don't want to use this. I think it's dumb. <laughs> Let me unplug it. Uh -huh. Yes. I actually love that they thought this through. Creality were like, some people won't like this feature. <laughs> Therefore, let's give them an out. Uh, like that. <laughs> so it just sort of stows away there. And then our little silicon booty goes on top. And just like that, we have removed a stupid pump. Love it. Can you introduce yourself to the dear viewers? What is DMG Minis and what have you been working on lately? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, my name is Chad Hoveter, and he said, and as he said, my uh, my name pretty much everywhere online is DMG Minis, and um, I've just been doing lots of um, proxy work for our favorite tabletop game, 
and um, on Patreon and selling the STL files for people with printers on, on Colts 3D and Gumroad and even a little bit now on my miniature factory, kind of dipping my toes into that a little bit, um, into the tribes mechanism over mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And specifically, you're doing, I guess, your version of combat patrol boxes. Yeah. At the moment. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what was the name you gave them again? Yes, I named them Cap Kits. Conflict Area Patrol Kits. Conflict <laughs> Area Patrol Kits. Nice. Yeah, a little bit of a sidestep there, but um, they're doing pretty well. I mean, people are buying them, so uh, that's a good thing. Okay, resin, resin. Mm, which resin? So many resins. Oh, tensile? How do I even test tensile strength? Fuck, Monocure are still waiting for this to show up in a video. Are you serious? What the fuck? Tell me where they are keeping the STL files. Up your ass. The STL files. Even if I knew where they were, I would never tell a heretic like you. Well, uh, this clearly sucks for miniatures. Way too brittle. Sorry, Charlie. I know, let's try this stuff I found on eBay. J-O-A-B-S-like. First things first, though, we have to level this build plate. Oh, I'm... I... I d- 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 stop, 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 stop. Because I hit the leveling button, um, and I haven't loosened these off. That would have been a fucking catastrophe. I'm really, really not a fan of this style of leveling screw. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm not. Once you use those big Elegoo ones, these things are just a pain in the ass. So now, that's loose. So we can resume the leveling, right? Whoa, there she goes. One thing, uh, one thing with your build plate is tighten the absolute living shit out of these. Whatever kind of leveling system you have, whether it's this four bolt one or the two bolt on the the uh, spring loaded ball joint, tighten the absolute shit out of them, and it'll stay in. It'll stay level longer. It was maybe four, four and a half years ago that I got forced into digital because I was doing all my stuff by hand. Um, and then the the market just kind of forced me into digital because all my all my clients wanted they didn't want to send physical miniatures to China anymore they wanted to send files <laughs> right so okay I had to like learn digital like quick kind of BS'd my way through my first uh, <laughs> digital uh, commission like yeah I know what I'm doing <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> <laughs> what's it gonna be Kyle Tits or destiny? Tits. Dude, I'm waiting for this build plate to come down right now and it's so slow. Come on, man. I calibrated this resin using table flip foundries. Cones of calibration. And unfortunately, Creality seems to be missing an exposure range finding function like the Anycubic machines. So got a docker point for that. I was also lazy here and just did two tests and I'm fairly sure I'm overexposing. However, Sometimes you just gotta enjoy 3D printing and let it wow you. It's always better to overexpose a little and enjoy consistent success with your prints than to ride that line of success and failure in the pursuit of maximum detail crispiness. But don't get me wrong, these prints, thanks to this 8K LCD, still look phenomenal, and you'll see that for yourself here in a sec. Okay, well I didn't get it on film, but fuck me, look at all the resin that's like splashed off the build plate onto the door. Ugh. So yeah, that's a thing that can happen. Do watch out for this. Why, Creality? You were so, you're doing so good. What you're looking at here is the lift speed at the very end of a print as it finishes. When you're printing a very short, low layer count print, like a calibration part, your build plate is likely still gonna be submerged under the resin in your vat when it finishes printing. So I think what's happening here is the build plate is yeeting itself out of the vat. Yeeting. Can I say yeeting? Am I? 
Am I too old to say yeeting? If I have to ask, it probably, <laughs> probably means I'm too old to say yeeting. <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. I'm young at heart, damn it. So I think what's happening here is the build plate is yeeting itself out of the vat way too quickly, and that's what's spilling resin everywhere. So be mindful of that when doing really short prints, and you can counteract it by simply reducing the amount of resin in the vat. What a fuck around. I hate mess. You might be wondering, has Creality fixed these weird travel speed issues in the latest firmware? Well, the answer to that is no. No, they have not. Because literally the first thing I did when I got this printer set up was connect it to my Wi-Fi network and update the firmware. Oh, it's got uh, Wi-Fi. Of course it does. That's cool. Found a new version. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, fuck yeah. Check. That's so cool. Wow. There is a way to remotely send prints to this machine too using Creality Slicer and their cloud app. But I found that whole process to be exceedingly tedious, confusing, and ultimately ineffective for using the printer. It's infinitely faster and easier to just slice, save to a USB, and stick that sucker in the printer and go. Okay, so I've uploaded it on the uh, fucking website. Oh, sorry, on the slicer. But then if I go in here into uploads, there's just nothing. So... Fuck me, I guess. This Creality Cloud app is super spammy too, with notifications and emails multiple times a day. So, it's a hard pass for me. Quirks aside, I'm really happy to see this printer just working like a champ out of the box and putting out beautiful looking prints without a failure inside. I have been sculpting... Professionally, I guess I've been sculpting since about 2009, 2010. But it was... I had a full-time job at the time, so I was just kind of doing it in my spare time. I had a group of friends who were who had a game company and they were producing games and they just kind of they knew I was learning how to sculpt. They're like, "You want to you want to sculpt our miniatures?" And I was like, "Oh uh, yeah, sure." <laughs> so um, it just kind of yeah, fell into awesome. my lap, and then I just kind of it was a very popular game. I don't know if you've ever heard of Mice and Mystics. I think it came out in like 2010. So because of that, I kind of got my name out into the you know, the ether for board gaming and I made a business out of sculpting for board games. Your software of choice is ZBrush, is that right? Yeah, for sculpting, absolutely. I kind of the same way that I fell into sculpting for board games, just by hand and epoxy putty and clay and all that. I kind of fell mm -hmm. into sculpting for board games in 3D the same way. I was just like, I don't know, what are you supposed to use? And I grabbed three ZBrush and started learning it as quick as I could because the market was just kind of forcing me. How much of your previous sculpting experience would you say translated uh, directly to digital sculpting? Um, I'd have to say a fair bit because the tools are very much like using a tool, a physical tool, you know? I, I feel like it translated well the skills from clay sculpting to 3d sculpting um because you're kind of building up layers you know you're less you're not really scraping mm. away layers although you can do that but you're building up forms with tools that very feel very clay like it's it's interesting um that that's uh, a thing and uh but there are some significant advantages to 3d sculpting because you can sculpt in symmetry, which is something you cannot do in real life. <laughs> so Yeah, so you can like turn on a, the mirror modifier or whatever it's called, and whatever you do on one side happens on the other side. Exactly. Yeah, that's real, real handy. <laughs> Here's a little tip. For multi-part models like these scarab dudes with lots of bits, just group them together and overlap the rafts in the slicer like this for each model. That way they should all come off the build plate together in one piece, which just makes it so much easier to keep track of which parts go with which mini. In you go, son. And you. Oh, yeah. So Creality also sent me this wash and cure machine. This is the UW02, and there's not much to say about it really. It works well, it's decently sized, it's cheap. I like it, buy it. I just wish it also had the swingy door like the Hallet. And you support all the models yourself, don't you? Um, I, I do now. I didn't always, but I do now. Like for the past year, I've been doing at least maybe a little bit more than a year, been doing my own supports. And it's a little sketchy at first, but I, I think I've kind of got the hang of it. I don't get a whole <laughs> lot of complaints about supports. 
it's usually missing files. Like, hey, yeah. I, you didn't put in the shoulder pads in this set. And I'm like, ah, dang it. That's usually my big problem. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? That was one bit of feedback I have here. It's not not really missing files per se, but I would have loved to have seen some renders in that, ah. um, just so I know, like, because there's one guy, one of the the scarab dudes. Uh, what do you call him? A Escar scaraba. Yeah, it's a scarab uh, in Spanish. <laughs> Escaraba. <laughs> Ah, okay. It sounds much cooler like that. Escaraba. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's got some spice to it. <laughs> yeah, man. So one of those models has these, like, uh, what, what, how would you describe them? Like tassels or something, like these little flowy things that come off it. The little priest. Yeah, yeah, the priest guy. Uh, I couldn't figure out where to put them, so I just left them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it works without them. I made them specifically where you didn't, there wasn't like a indent on the front of him where those had to go. They kind of like fit uh, under the... Uh, they kind of like fit under the uh, shoulder pad if you use them. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so something I've sort of made a name for myself for here with this YouTube channel, I think is the critical analysis of pre-supported files and their print friendliness or printability, let's say. Yeah. And something that I really enjoy and appreciate about DMG minis is that you do, I think, a bloody good job at supporting your models. Well, that's really great to hear because that's always... <laughs> Um, I'm never sure until, you know, until someone says something, you know, it's like, yeah. I print them and sometimes because I'm just not a very good printer, because as you know, that's an entire hobby unto itself. <laughs> um, well, it can be. Yeah. It's like, sometimes I get good prints and sometimes I don't. So uh, when I don't, it's like, oh, is it my files? And then I kind of wait for someone to tell me whether or not they had the same problem. <laughs> so it is good yeah. to hear that though. Thank you. DMG minis with the magical supports. Incredible, dude. Look at that. Oh, oh, it's magic. I really feel like the Hallet Mage Pro is trying to push me to use its fast printing mode called Dynax. From the incredibly slow Z travel speed at the beginning of a print, to the default print settings being a bit on the slow side too, I decided it was time to enable this mysterious Dynax setting and push this thing to its limits. Going back to, uh, what was I talking about? We were, uh, we were talking about the printer, yeah. Yeah, with the Zangor. So I ran off one plate with this setting off. Turned out perfect. Uh, and I think it was like a five, six hour print, something like that. Right, and right. then I ran off the same plate again. And this time I turned on that Dynax or whatever it's called. Uh, and it printed in like an hour. <laughs> and, Whoa, um, that's nuts. Yeah, and it turned out perfect as well. Like none of the support tips were disconnected, which I thought might be what would happen if it's ripping off the FEP that quickly. Right. Um, but yeah, it totally held up and it's, it's, it blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. That blows my mind. It kind of making me want to check this printer out. Yeah. Oh, you know what I really appreciated the way you did the, mm. uh, Zangors. What do you call them? The, uh, yeah, Quetzal gores. <laughs> Quetzal gores. The it's, way, the way it's you really did, clunky, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah whatever, <laughs> it works. Um, the way, you, the way, <laughs> the way you did the the Quetzal, the gores, uh, is yes, interest like is well, it's really cool because at first I was a bit worried because I saw you had like X amount of torsos and X amount of legs, and I was like, oh, well, right, how am I going to do like twenty of these? Like they're not going to be, um, they're, they're not going to, there's not going to be enough diversity in the poses or whatever but then right. after i printed out a couple batches i started putting them together i realized like oh hang on because you've got all these different leg poses and all these different torso poses you can actually just mix and match them as like yeah. quite a lot quite a bit and then the, the the hands are a joint as well so you can then position the way they're holding the uh, the chain yeah. swords and the pistols somewhat and so because right. of like so what i'm saying is that they're, they're it, the way you've done it it's actually it's quite modular and flexible in that you can do a big horde of them, I think, and it still reads as not being duplicates kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was looking at your picture that you sent earlier, and I was like, yeah, th that worked out. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be honest, it was kind of a timing issue. I was like, I can't make 10 individual ones of these for people to make two squads mm -hmm. out of. So I just kind of chose to do it that way. I'm going to be real with you guys. I was pretty intimidated to paint these minis up, and I procrastinated a long while before finally putting brush to model. This whole project, in fact, has drawn on longer than I ever imagined or intended, 
and not for technical difficulty or for lack of enthusiasm for the project. Becoming familiar with the Creality Hallet Mage Pro has been an absolute joy for me, and working with and speaking to Chad from DMG Minis is an absolute treat. There's just been a lot going on behind the scenes lately, and so it's always important for me when life gets crazy to pump the brakes a bit, slow down, and just breathe. And anyway, as it turned out, sitting down to paint up these minis was exactly the kind of catharsis my soul was craving for. I loved every second of painting these models up. It was a bit like a puzzle. First I had to figure out the best blue to use on the Escaraba armor, and my first choice, Tidal Wave, turned out not to be such a great fit. Not letting it discourage me though, I then switched gears and tried another blue, this time Raging Sea, and began applying this to the Quetzalcoatl's skin. This immediately struck a chord for me, like it was the perfect colour choice, a colour that was made for this exact purpose. This is like the height of speed painting whenever this happens. It makes it effortless to go through and paint for hours when the colour you are putting down just works so perfectly and so satisfyingly. I then wondered how this would look applied over the blue Escaraba armour, and as I write this I'm unsure yet how this shows up on camera, but to my eye this looked amazing. And after seeing the difference it makes, I went back over every single model's armour. And this worked out really well I feel, because it means the armour isn't exactly the same hue as the Quetzalcoatl's skin, they are each distinct, but familiar. The next piece of the puzzle to solve was how to paint all the gold bits. I thought this step is surely the most important, because the gold is kinda what makes Thousand Suns recognisably Thousand Suns, you know? So again, I put on my experimental hat here and got to work. My first attempt was Vallejo Liquid Gold Enamel. These paints have great coverage and look amazing, but I found despite mixing it thoroughly that it was just too runny and wanted to seep into all the nooks and crannies on the models. Basically everywhere I didn't want it to go. I've really been enjoying Army Painter's Air Range, which does include some metallics, so I thought I might try Greedy Gold for my next experiment. I honestly wasn't expecting much, and frankly not much is what was had. The coverage of this paint when applied by brush was terrible, but oh well, it was worth a shot. Now I can't remember where I heard about this next one, so please leave a comment if you know whose video it was. But someone on Hobby YouTube at some point pointed out that you can get a great gold by painting Sand Golem V1 Speed Paint over a silver metallic. So I wanted to give that a go here and see for myself. The metallic of choice for me was Vallejo Acrylic Metal Color Silver, as this stuff covers really well and is nice and shiny. Uh, I really should pick up more paints from this range as they are always so nice to work with. And yeah, holy crap, the Army Painter Sand Golem Speed Paint from the V1 range looks absolutely phenomenal going down on top of this silver. The combo, although it takes longer to do, gives you a really beautiful and rich golden hue. Then for a little extra effort, a rough edge highlight or dry brush in silver really makes it sparkle and read as a vibrant, polished gold. I absolutely love the way this colour combo came together. For everything else, I just kept it fast and simple, green for all the feathers, purple and red for all the cloth, magic and weird fleshy bits. I experimented a little with wet blending the new speed paints and it seems to have worked well so that was nice to see. Yeah, painting done. And then we have it, a Thousand Suns Combat Patrol Box. Uh, I may be a few Zangors short, but I think I made up for it by having one or two extra Terminators. I don't know, and that really just highlights the power of 3D printing your own miniatures. Print exactly as many or as few of whatever you need, there's no limit here. If you'd like to get your hands on these awesome miniatures too, or any miniatures from DMG Minis, I've got a very special 30% discount code just for you if you shop at DMG Minis on Colts 3D and Gumroad. And if you join the DMG Minis Patreon, there's going to be a new cap kit soon, this time proxying in for Adeptus Astartes. But not only that, as a bonus for DMG Minis patrons, you can hear our entire recorded conversation too. So don't miss out on that. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash DMG Minis and claim your rewards now. Chad, with your permission, I'd like to close this video out on something very special. Okay. You have this absolutely fantastic Bon Jovi cover on your YouTube channel. May I share some of that here and play the viewers out as they make their way to the DMG Minis Patreon page and sign up for your latest release? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. But yes, that would be phenomenally hilarious. I love it. Betty to rock.
shit. Okay, never mind. I'll just leave a link down to Chad's YouTube channel below, along with his Patreon. Okay, well, that did not go so well. So I'm thinking, because this is made for a webcam, this USB port must output power. So let's give this a go. <laughs> Sick. All right, let's uh, let's read off some names real quick. Massive, massive thank you to the latest subscribers over on buymeacoffee.com forward slash once in a six side. You guys are fucking awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's stayed subscribed. I know it's been a few months since the last video. Uh, and yeah, obviously things have slowed down a lot. But going into Christmas and the new year, I am ramping up production. We've got already three videos in the work right now. So really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Hang tight. There's more coming. It's going to be great. So thank you very much. Nicholas Crockett, Duncan Schlutt, Chris Denmark, Oggybox1, Lachlan, Maddie Ice, Kanskji, oh god, <laughs> Mallow, Hand of Banath, 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 oh god, Yobby, Yobi, Louis, Lewis, Cameron, Chris, Oaks, David, Vedantry. Oh my god, I butchered like half of those, but it's okay. I'm sure it's fine. You forgive me, right? Thank you very much.